welcome back to another comparison, and this time you may be wondering, why are we comparing the 777X up against its smaller sister, the 787? It's like sister rivalry got mad? Well, let me explain. In 2004, Boeing launched a brand new aircraft development which prioritised efficiency over anything else. This aircraft was to feature untested technologies and eventually went on to receive its nickname 7E7. Pushed by customer demand, rival Airbus wasn't gonna give Boeing an easy time. With their A350XWB, they had an aircraft with the same levels of efficiency but with higher capacity and payload range. This was targeted at Boeing's other hugely successful white body, the 777. Following this, Airbus gained huge orders from customers looking to replace older 777s, and as the A350 is positioned higher than 787, it was more suited to replace 777-200. In the 2010s, as 787 development was nearing an end, many airlines were looking for their future 777-300ER replacement. Largest 777 customer Emirates wasn't convinced by 787, with it being too small for their needs. And other airlines like Singapore also followed suit, eventually placing orders for A350. Following pressure from customers, Boeing worked on a future 777-300 replacement. They decided to take the hugely successful 777 and upgrade it with new technologies already developed for 787. And with that, they launched their largest and latest widebody yet, the 777X. However, the 777X was slightly larger than A350 or current 777s at the time, while 787 was slightly smaller. And that brings us on to the point of today's comparison. How big then is the gap between a medium-sized 787 and larger 777X? And what separates these two aircraft market segments? Well, let's find out. But before we do, if you're new here, do consider subscribing and stay tuned for more great videos on the way. Do also check out the Airplane Productions Instagram page, home to even more great aviation content and the latest updates in the industry via the Instagram story feature. Also, anyone flying in infinite flight, check out Pilot Sam 4 on YouTube for some great IF live streams. Right, let's kickstart this epic one. Starting with performance, we'll compare the closest variants of both. The 787-9 flies the furthest of 787s, with a range of 7,655 nautical miles. However, the longest range 777X, the Dash 8, flies even further to an incredible 8,730 nautical miles. The 777-8 also carries 365 passengers, while 787-9 carries around 300 passengers in a typical two-class layout. The larger 787-10 does get close, carrying 337 passengers in a typical two-class layout, but falls way short of range with it flying 6,430 nautical miles. The larger 777-9 is unmatched in capacity, carrying 400 passengers in a typical two-class layout and flies 7,285 nautical miles. All in all, the difference in performance between the two aircraft market segments can clearly be seen.
Moving on to engines, both utilize the latest generation of engines, feature higher bypass ratios and a quieter engine with lower fuel burn. The GE9X powering 777X is the latest engine from General Electric and builds upon technologies developed for GE NX powering 787. The GE9X is the largest engine ever, with fan diameter of 134 inches. It produces 105,000 pounds of thrust. Interesting to note, the previous generation engine powering 777-300ER is actually rated for more power, up to 115,000 pounds of thrust. Though the new wing of 777X allows for lower engine thrust and fuel burn, 787 is available with two engine choices, either the GE NX or Rolls-Royce Trent 1000 engine, with the most powerful producing 71,000 pounds of thrust. All in all, both feature the newest, cleanest and quietest engines on offer. These engines also make the new aircraft more fuel efficient. However, the newer lighter design of 787 makes it the winner in outright efficiency. We will compare the 787-9 against 777-9 for a fair comparison, with both having similar ranges and market positioning. Comparing both while taking a look at the airplane production's chart of efficiency, the 787-9 burns less fuel per trip than 777-9 by 6%, but the additional seats on 777-9 does give it an advantage per seat of nearly 21%. Per seat it burns 2.42 litres per 100 kilometres compared to 3.08 litres of 787-9. Though per trip, it burns 7.69 kilograms per kilometre compared to 7.18 kilograms for 787. Moving on to cabins, the 777X has a larger and wider cabin. It seats up to 10 abreast with 18-inch seat bases, though width is still at 17.5 inches. 787 has 17.5 inches in a 9 abreast layout. Both feature the latest generation of Boeing Sky interior, with larger windows, new wireless connectivity, the latest IFE, curved overhead bins with new mood lighting for a more spacious view, as well as more moist air and lower cabin altitude and pressure. However, the latest 777X takes things up a notch, with new cathedral-like ceilings, even more advanced projection mood lighting, and an expected quad cabin, though still noisier than rival A350-1000. One thing worth noting is that both feature new electronically controlled shades for windows, but it is an optional feature for 777X. All in all, besides being bigger, the latest interior of 777X builds on the 787 Sky interior and should be a nicer experience for fair paying passengers. In terms of advantages and disadvantages, the 777X is the latest, largest and greatest twin my body the American giant has ever made, with its high capacity like the 747 mixed with new efficiencies from the latest technologies, Boeing hopes the aircraft will transform the world one more time. However, the industry is moving away from higher capacity, with efficiency being the new name of the game. The heavy airframe of 777X makes it less efficient, with higher trip costs which deter airlines from investing in the aircraft. And it's a huge investment indeed, with list price of 432 million USD. 787 may be slightly smaller, but it still offers the same range as 777-9. Its size is more suited to today's challenging market conditions, with it being more competitive than ever, while its trip cost makes it more appealing to airlines. And this can clearly be seen in the order books, with the 787 experiencing continued demand and orders. In total, all 787 models have received 1,498 orders, with 18 being in the first quarter of 2020 alone.
The 777X order book is smaller, receiving 309 orders with the last being in early 2019 made by British Airways. So with all of this mentioned, as can be seen, both are completely different, with different range and characteristics tailored for each market segment they are meant to serve. However, which then is the better aircraft? Well, the 777X is one of the best widebodies Boeing has made from an engineering standpoint, with smart new design solutions making it the ultimate widebody. But with the market shifting away from high capacity to its high efficiency and trip costs, it's a 787 with its capacity and range tailored to the needs of most airlines that is the more relevant aircraft for future point-to-point -point travel. Do you agree with this verdict? And if you don't, why so? Please comment below. I would love to hear your opinion. Thanks for watching. Until we meet in the next epic comparison, detailed analysis, or aviation content, wishing everyone a truly clear sky ahead.